correspondent Kelsey Kernstein is live for us in Milwaukee. Kelsey, do we know what drove this ticket splitting? Well, here, this, here's the thing, Nicole. This is very common in Wisconsin. It's typically what we see. It's a highly divided swing state. It's what we've seen over the last several decades. And when we spoke to voters today, this is what is interesting. It wasn't about the party line, but it was about the candidate and what matched, who matched their beliefs. We'll wait till all the numbers come in before I declare final victory. But, uh, you know, I do believe that uh, this time, uh, truth has prevailed over the lies, over the character assassination. Hours of ballot tabulations, a close split race in Wisconsin, one that no poll could have predicted. Incumbent Republican Senator Ron Johnson winning re-election by 1%. And incumbent Democratic Governor Tony Evers winning re-election by more than 3%. Some people call it boring, but you know what, Wisconsin, as it turns out, boring wins. And Mr. Rogers is cool. Johnson winning his third term, and a senior advisor saying it was an uphill battle against the Democrats from the start, blaming a delayed run and a lack of funding. Well, I mean, they spent $50 million against Ron Johnson before we even bought our first yard sign. Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes conceding to Johnson's win, saying in a statement, We didn't get over the finish line this time. But I know this movement has meant so much to all of us. We'll keep going. Heading into election night, op-eds also pointing out Barnes' divisive racial comments, calling Wisconsin systemically racist. Some say these comments could have hurt his race because it made the white voter feel uncomfortable. Wisconsin is approximately 87% white, according to the U.S. Census Bureau 2020. Ultimately, Barnes needed Milwaukee, Dane, and Waukesha counties to win. But Johnson defeated Barnes in Waukesha. And the common theme after we spoke to voters in Wisconsin was that people in the state didn't vote for a party, but they voted for a candidate. I'm pretty consistent with being independent, so I pick who I feel is doing going to do the best job, whether it's Democrat or Republican. And this voter also splitting his vote, voting senatorial red, but gubernatorial blue. I didn't vote for Tim Michaels this time just because he was a slightly extremist Republican backed by a presidential candidate I didn't feel was appropriate the first time. And also very interesting to point out, Nicole, it was the most expensive governor race the state has ever seen, costing an estimated $115 million. Nicole? All right, Kelsey Kernstein, thank you for that. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.